In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the eye of partridge stitch for sock heel flaps. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. So this is a heel flap simulation that I'm working uh, over 20 stitches. So I've already established the stitch pattern and I'm going to show you how that works. But I, I do want to to let you know that there is a setup, a two row setup for this stitch pattern, just as there is for any heel flap, uh, where the first row of the setup is just knitting across all of your heel stitches. Then you turn so that the wrong side is facing and you slip the first stitch and purl all the way across. So then you have established your two setup rows. From that point, eye of partridge is a four row stitch pattern. Row one is worked by slipping the first two stitches of the row. So you slip the selvage stitch like you would for any heel flap. And then you slip the second stitch as well. And then you knit the third. And then from there on, you are alternating between slipping a stitch and knitting a stitch all the way across until you get to the last two stitches of the row. So I'm slipping a stitch and now I have two stitches left and I want to knit both of these stitches. So for row one, we start by slipping two stitches and ending with, two, with knitting two stitches. So now we work a wrong side row and as always, we slip the very first stitch of every row of the heel flap. So we slip that one as if to purl, and then we just purl the rest of the stitches all the way across. Row three of the pattern, again, starts by slipping just the selvage stitch, and now you go into alternating knit one, slip one. So the this knit one, slip one is offset from uh, row one. You are slipping stitches that were knit and knitting stitches that were slipped. And for this one, you're going, when you get to the last two stitches, you're slipping the, a stitch and then you're still knitting the last stitch. You always want to knit the last stitch of every right side row so that it will be available for slipping at the beginning of a wrong side row. So once again, you slip the first stitch and purl the rest. The tricky part is being able to recognize what row you should work when you get to a right side row because sometimes you can forget on your way purling across uh, what you had done on the previous row. So the easiest thing to do is to not try to figure it out by looking at the edges but by looking a little bit uh, uh, further down the row. And remember I said that you want to slip any stitches that had been uh, knit previously and knit anything that had been slipped previously. If you look at these stitches, you can see how this is an elongated stitch. That's a slip stitch where right next to it, you can see two small stitches. So that's your clue that the long stitches were slipped previously. So that's going to have to be knit and the tiny stitches were knit previously and those are going to have to be slipped. So you can work your way back to the end. You can say, well, this is going to be knit this is going to be slipped, this is going to be knit, and therefore both of these two stitches are going to have to be slipped. So we're ready for a row one. The other option for Eye of Partridge is to work a garter stitch frame at the beginning and end of the row. And what that means is that the first couple of stitches and the last couple of stitches are maintained in garter stitch rather than uh, in the pattern with a slipped selvage stitch. So this is an example of a sock that was knit with heel stitch, but it has a, a three stitch garter frame at the sides. So it's just an aesthetic choice that you might want to make. I've got two stitches in garter, in garter and the setup for this would be, again, row one of the setup, knit all of the stitches. Row two of the setup would be knit two, purl across to the last two stitches and knit those two, and that will establish your garter stitch edge. From then on, 
you always are knitting the first two stitches of the row and the last two stitches of the row to maintain the garter stitch and you work your eye partridge in between. Now, once again, I have this established already and we can see that I've got the elongated slip stitch under the second stitch and the tiny stitch uh, right here. So this means I'm ready to work a row one, which is to slip the first stitch and knit the second one. So for this, we're not doing two slip stitches in a row because we're not doing a slipped selvage stitch. So we work the garter stitch and then we go right into slip one, knit one all the way across until we get to our last two stitches. So I'm knitting this one and then I'm going to knit my two garter stitches. So in this row, I'm actually knitting the last three stitches, but I don't think of it that way. I'm just thinking about maintaining the slip one, knit one until I get to the last two stitches. And then I think, okay, this is my garter stitch. I need to knit these two stitches. And then on the wrong side rows, I always knit the first two stitches. And then I purl across to the last two stitches. I've come to the last two stitches and then I switch to knitting two. Now I'm ready to work row three of the pattern. So I've got my garter stitches that I start with. And this time I'm going to start with a knit one and then a slip one. So I knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one all the way across. And again, when you are working these stitches, you look to see what is under the needle and whether the stitch is more elongated or if it's tiny. If it's tiny, that means you're supposed to be slipping it. If it's more elongated, you are going to be knitting it. And so this time I'm ending with a, a slip stitch and I have my two stitches at the end and I knit those. One of the general rules of thumb for heel flaps is that the selvages are slipped at the start of each row and that when you pick up stitches for the gussets, you pick up one stitch for every slipped selvage stitch. This works really well for heel stitch because the row gauge is more compressed than for stockinette. These two swatches were both knit with 32 stitches over 32 rows. So you can see how much shorter this one is. The row gauge is more compressed, but it's compressed in just the right way so that the width of one stockinette stitch is equal to two rows of heel stitch. So when you pick up one stitch for every slipped salvage stitch, the fabric that you end up with that is coming out of the edge of the flap is the same width as this flap is long. So when you knit your flap to the actual length of the heel that you need, you get a good fit. With Ive Partridge, the row gauge is even more compressed than heel stitch. So if you knit the flap to the actual length of your heel, you'll knit quite a few more rows than you would with heel stitch. So when you pick up one stitch for each selvage stitch, you'll end up with more stockinette stitches at the start of your gusset, which will make the sock circumference too big around. So I have partridge is only compressed when it's relaxed. It stretches vertically really well. The heel of this sock is about half an inch shorter than the heel of this sock when they're relaxed. And the picked up stitches on the edge of the eye of partridge heel are compressed. So when I put this sock on, the heel stretches to the correct length and the gusset stitches are no longer compressed. So these two heels are now the same length. For an eye of partridge heel, you need to calculate the number of rows to knit in order to get the right number of stitches that are going to create this flap width that you need. So first of all, you need to know what that length of heel flap needs to be when you are wearing it. And I've linked to a video at the top of the screen that shows you how to measure that heel length. So once you know what your heel length is, let's say it's 2.5 inches. You multiply that by your stockinette stitch gauge. So if you are working at say eight stitches per inch, then that's what you multiply. So you need two and a half inches worth of stitches at eight stitches per inch, and that would be 20 stitches. So you know that you need to be able to pick up 20 stitches along the edge of that flap. 
And the way you get 20 slipped selva stitches is by knitting 40 rows. So you want 20 stitches times two is equal to 40 rows. That's how you know how many rows of eye of partridge to knit in its relaxed state so that when you put it on, it will stretch to the correct length. To get the best fit for a sock with a heel flap, it's important to know what the correct sock heel length is for your foot. Many patterns will call for knitting a flap to a particular length, which may or may not be the correct length for your foot. Other patterns will instruct you to knit the flap for as many rows as you have heel stitches. As you saw in this video, that creates heels of wildly different shapes and sizes depending on what stitch pattern is used. Knowing what size heel flap you need and understanding how different stitch patterns affect the size and shape of the heel flap is an important part of getting the best fit when using your selected stitch pattern. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.